The meta right now are explosively fast, reverse select ACs with powerful quick boosting capability, dual Zimmerman shotguns and stun needle launcher to stagger opponents, and a finisher weapon like the Songbird grenade launcher or an energy blade. You came here because you wanted to beat the dual Zimmerman shotguns build without using them yourself. But truth be told, even I cannot offer a solution that could really outperform this build in close combat. But I can offer you something better. I present to you... The Missile Lord. Here's my proof. I spent the past two hours using this AC. I won them all. You see, most ACs are designed for close quarters combat, like a pair of angsty teens and Gundams. These ACs often prioritize quick boost over vertical boost and over boost efficiency, making them quick little buggers but also very incapable of flying all that high. Plus, none of the weapons I described earlier are capable of reaching mid-range and beyond. That's where you come in. The strategy of this mech is simple. Turn Hardlock on, overboost to the top of the arena, deploy your quad floats, and rain fury death upon your enemies. You want to win and you want your opponent to have a bad time? This is it. Your foe will realize that his AC is not nearly capable of making it far enough into the air and that none of his weapons can reach you. Make it rain missiles that stagger basically with every full volley. Let's go over the build. Every part has been specifically designed to keep the AC as light as possible so that it moves fast and consumes less energy while doing so. First, the weapons. The arms hold dual siege missile launchers, the WS-5000 Aperitive. These missile launchers chase their targets after delay, meaning you can control how spread out your volley is. The back weapons carry a pair of scatter missile launchers, the WS-5001 Soup. These missile launchers have the unique property of firing in three different stages, allowing for continuous pressure. Each time you fire a full volley, you suffocate your opponent with 46 missiles. Assuming that they all hit, they deal 3,568 impact damage. For reference, most meta mechs can take about 1,600 or less impact damage before staggering, meaning just under half of them have to hit to stagger. I made this particular mech designed for the sole purpose of resisting impact damage, and it only goes up to 2,792. And with its lumbering size, it's definitely not going to dodge any of those missiles. These four weapons hold more than enough ammo for one AC, and the damage they deal is no slouch either. The next part is the VE-44B head. You will be using the scanning function when your opponent tries to hide from you. It's important that you do not get ambushed or lose track of your opponent. This head has the greatest scanning distance, and it could do so far more often than other head parts. The core of the IBCO3C HAL826 and the arms DFAROA Tian Kang have been chosen simply because they are the lightest available parts that have the EN load we will need. The legs, of course, are the Veril LG 033M quad legs that allow us to float for most of the duel. They also carry the weight better than any other quad part. Now most people actually screw up their booster choice. You see, there is a stat called the Quick Boost Reload Ideal Weight. This stat must be higher than the total load of your AC, otherwise it will be highly inefficient to quick boost. I chose the BST G2 P04 because it not only keeps the stat in mind, but because it has a high thrust, allowing you to dodge grenades without quick boosting. As a note, you only want to quick boost when you absolutely need to, such as to dodge grenades, missile volleys, or to juke your opponent if they try to engage you in close combat. The Missile Lord uses FCS G2 P10 SLT simply because it has the best missile lock correction. That's it. The generator is the DF GN08 Santai. Its extremely high EN capacity and EN recharge means more time spent in the air and less time on the ground. Finally, equip Pulse Armor, and I'll explain why in a bit. If you follow the three rules of the Missile Lord, he will grant you victory. Number one, always keep a health advantage and play for time. Sometimes your opponent will hide behind obstacles, baiting you to engage him in his desired range. You will wait. When the timer runs out, the one with the greater health wins, which will be you. Number two, stay directly on top of your opponent. There are a few reasons for this. One, it prevents the use of certain back weapons for the enemy. Two, it prevents them from overboosting to you directly. Three, it makes the missiles ignore obstacles by hitting the enemy vertically. The only exception to this rule is for the rare occasion when an enemy AC can actually catch up to you in the air. Then you have to keep your distance at all times. Three, use pulse armor when you land and fully recharge your energy before boosting back up. All birds of the sky must roost and this AC is no exception. If the battle goes long enough, this is the only time you will be vulnerable. By using the pulse armor after you have landed, you all but guarantee that you can charge your energy bar. It's important not to panic and overboost when you are low. You usually only need to recharge once per battle, so the one pulse armor you get is enough. Some final advice, the Missile Lord does not do the best in these maps in particular due to the overabundance of vertical cover they offer. This particular map is my least favorite as there are some segments that basically force you to engage in your opponent's terms. It is possible, just tricky. On the other hand, this AC works quite well on these maps.
follow these rules and you will win. Because half the battle happens at the assembly garage and you just won that half. Pleasure doing business with you. I'll be seeing you.